In this video we're going to be looking at how shapes interact in Photoshop and how we use them. Uh, they work a little bit differently than uh, some other aspects. So uh, we do have to be a little careful in the way that we we utilize them because they're not technically when you first make them it's kind of like placing an image they're not rasterized so you have to you have to work with them a little bit. I'm going to show you why it is that they're not rasterized when you first bring them in. Uh, the first thing to do would be just to show you the shape tool down at the bottom and here's each of the options that it kind of gives you uh, rectangles, uh, rounded rectangle, ellipse, polygon, line tool which I actually don't use very much and then the custom shape tool which allows you to bring in other custom shapes and you have actually a long menu down here up at the top of different things that you can bring in you can even download more uh, we use that from time to time mostly I stick to the geometric things uh, but occasionally I'll run into a project or a situation in which that's useful right now I'm gonna stick with uh, just ellipse and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and drag out a circle now whenever you click and drag I can do an oval and get odd shapes. Uh, I can also, while I'm dragging, hold shift and that will keep it a perfect circle at no matter what size. So that's holding shift. Really important to remember uh, when you're putting in shapes because when things get skewed it sometimes doesn't look the way you want it to. So I'm just going to bring in a circle first. Do something about this size. Alright, now as you see over in the layers palette, it brings it in, it puts it in on this background it has an icon just like when you place a photo it has an icon in the corner of the thumbnail as well it looks a little bit different though because it's telling me that this is a path a path is not a rasterized pixel image it's actually a computer generation that will become a pixel image once you actually were to save it out as a JPEG or something like that but for right now working in Photoshop it is a path and here's the reason for that alright I'm gonna make two of these in fact, I'm just going to go ahead and hit uh, Command J and pull this one over so that I have two. So I duplicated that layer. Now I have two of them. And I'm not going to bother renaming the layers right now. But with one of them, I'm going to do exactly like I did with the photo earlier. And I'm going to rasterize the layer. Now the icon has disappeared from the thumbnail. And this is no longer a path or a shape. It is. Uh, just pixels. It is a raster image. Now I'm going to take both of these, select them both by holding shift and clicking both in the in the layers palette, and I'm going to shrink them down really, really small. And I'm going to go to my arrow to confirm that. It's going to say apply transformation. I hit apply. And now I'm going to scale them back up. And I'm going to do the same thing. Back to my arrow and apply. Now, if I want to zoom in on these, which that's what I'm going to do with uh, Command Plus on the menu, the edge of this circle that is still a shape is completely clean. It's totally clean. I can zoom in really far before this is actually 100% zoom. I can see down here in the bottom left corner, and it is a totally clean edge. Now I'm going to zoom out, uh, Command Minus, and then in on my other shape, go down to the edge and you can see that this is by no means at all clean it's actually quite messy that's what happens when you scale something down that is a raster and then try to bring it back up so you, having them as shapes essentially gives you flexibility it gives you flexibility with your layers and allows you to make basically to change your mind and change the size of something which comes up more often than you might think uh, so I'm going to go ahead and drop this one out and we're going to stick with uh, this original circle. Now you notice what I did, did there was go up to the top and hit show transform controls. I can toggle that off and on. Now I can move the circle no matter what, but if I hit show transform controls it shows me the bounding boxes on the edges and I can scale this up and down using the corner. I can flatten it using the top, so on and so forth. Uh, you do want to make sure that, for example, sizing it down here just like when we were drawing it out holding shift is what keeps it in proportion this also works with photos and items I'm going to talk more about that later but it's important to remember because I see students mess this up a lot always make sure you hold shift when you're scaling something up and down and it needs to stay the same way that it was 
All right, so I have this. I did want to look at, I'm going to go back to my shape tool down here so that I get my options up at the top. Shapes come with uh, basically two different elements built into them. One is a fill and one is a stroke. They're listed up here at the top. The fill is literally the color uh, inside the circle itself. So I'm actually going to change this to a nice blue. And then the stroke is an outline that goes around it. Uh, you can see right now it has the white line through it. It has no stroke at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and throw on an orange one and then using this option next to it I can increase the weight. I can also make it a dotted line or something like that. Uh, strokes have their place but more often than not you'll probably find that you don't want to use them. You can however do something say if I wanted just a ring rather than a circle itself go to the fill and I can turn off the fill inside and now you can see I just have this ring and if I wanted to I could always once I'm done with it, I'm happy with it, rasterize it. So this is the basics of shapes in Photoshop. Uh, there's more complexities to them, uh, but this is kind of the, the bare bones basics.